It is statistically impossible for a gay to possess all five of the following. Math skills. A good relationship with their father. Math skills. A good relationship with their father. Math skills. PEMDAS bitch. A good relationship with their father. <laughs> Math skills. A good relationship with their father. Math skills. A good relationship with their father. Guys, welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Uh, conservatives, uh, specifically in, in this case, Jeremy Boring, who owns um, The Daily Wire along with uh, uh, Ben Shapiro here. Uh, he recently had a post and he decided to attack uh, the red pill men and that we're vile. I think one of the, uh, he said what we're doing is evil and that we're vile. And uh, why? Because we don't hold up the sanctity of marriage. We don't, we don't worship at the altar of women and, and we're giving young men bad advice because we're, we're bitter and we've had some bad things happen to us. Well, the truth is, uh, yes, most, most men's content creators like myself or Aaron Clary or Coach Red Pill or, you know, Kevin Samuels, yeah, that's what, that's a lot of, a lot of us guys that are this age, uh, we've, we've been through the ringer. And at one point in time, I'm quite sure, you know, uh, if you take somebody like um, Steven Crowder, for example, a boy for a long time, he sure pushed back against men that didn't want to be married. And he kind of called us cowards. And he said, uh, we we're afraid of taking responsibilities. And we're just boys in men's body. And you don't know what it's like until to be a man until your father, then you're married and you have responsibilities. I bet if you asked him now that uh, he's divorced and he's had to admit he picked the wrong one, uh, and his life has been kind of turned upside down and done quite, quite a bit of damage to his income in his channel, I wonder, if, I wonder if he'd say the same thing. Or if he'd say, eh, well, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, first I have a video from Jordan Peterson six years ago. I, it is old, I grabbed the old one on purpose. Uh, because before this video that I'm going to show, he he called, you know, guys that are going their own way, or red pill men, he called them weasels. He called us weasels. And then he came out and he apologized. And he said, well, actually, yeah, they do kind of have, uh, they, do, they do kind of have a point. I, I had to pause there for a second because I hear the squeaking noise and it's, it's a little bird outside my window. I thought something like um, one of my, something mechanical was uh, squealing around here. Uh, anyway. So let's let's jump right into this. I'm only going to quickly uh, play Jordan because here's the thing, right? He understands what we're talking about. He knows what we're talking about. And yet he still puts it on us that we found the wrong women or we chose poorly or we need to grow up or whatever. Uh, I'll, I'll let him say what he's got to say here. Is there an instance where, where you feel you said something that, that appeared to be true to you at the time? And knowing what you know. Yes, I think I was a little. I think I was a little dismissive of the men going their own way. Because I think I called them pathetic weasels, which, and I had my reasons for that. My reasons were, roughly speaking, that who, I, who are the men going their own way? Oh, just for context. Well, they're a group of people, mostly on the net, who have had, who've been burned in their relationships, or who conceptualize themselves as having been burned in their relationships. And they believe that the legal structure in particular in Western countries is so tilted against men, particularly in family dispute situations that, and divorce settlement, that it's safer for men not to establish permanent relationships with women. Let me pause there for a second. He gets it partially right. Um, there are a lot of men that are fine having a permanent relationship with one woman, but you don't get the courts involved, which means that depending on where you live, you have to look at cohabitation laws and, and common law marriage laws. You don't get married. Uh, you better be real careful in having children with them because that puts you at the whims of the woman and the state and the government for at least here in the United States, the next 18 years. But there are a lot of guys that say, no, like my, I'll give you a good example. My uncle, Charlie, <laughs> my uncle, Charlie, uh, he was a bit of a womanizer. He was married. He had kids. Uh, he was my father's let me think. He was my father's uh, brother, um, and he had a girlfriend named Margaret. Well, my own, now I didn't understand all this when I was a kid, kid. But as I got older, I kind of realized, oh, okay. Like he wasn't a, a playboy bachelor. He was in a long-term relationship, 
but he just didn't want to get married. And I didn't understand why, and I don't think my, my parents understood why, because they really didn't have, I said, why doesn't he marry Margaret? And why don't they, and my parents were like, I don't know. But now as I've gotten older, you know, he had his own home. And when we went to visit him, we stayed at his home. And he would go out to, uh, what, I, like one of the, uh, like the, uh, what are the clubs that, that they have for, for guys that are like the, uh, where they wear the funny conical hats and all that crap, like the, the, the moose or the elks club or something like that. He'd go out there and have some beers. Uh, he'd hang out with his girlfriend, Margaret. We met her. She was a very nice lady there. And this is when they were in probably their seventies, sixties or seventies, both very nice people. Now, at my age, I didn't ask my uncle why he, he didn't marry her and why they didn't. But she had her own house, and they both lived separately. And then they would get together and go on dates and do their thing. And it was like that for 20 years. So my, if my uncle, and this is going back 40 years, 45 years ago now, if 45 years ago my uncle had his house and she had her house and they both dated and they both did their things together, whatever that is, and I don't want to think about old people doing old person things in the bedroom, but they did their things together. And then they went back to their separate houses. She didn't sleep over. He didn't sleep over. They were separate. It worked for them for like 20 years. And I don't know, maybe they left each other in the wills or something like that. It can be done. And it, so I think, you know, and, and the other thing is a lot of men's content creators have different opinions. If you were to, you know, if you were to speak to one's, one content creator, he says one thing, another one has another thing. That's what's so beautiful about having YouTube or Rumble or Locals is because you've got places where guys say, hey, you know what, this resonates with me. That resonates with me a little bit. This not so much, yes, more of that. I've never said don't date, but there are other ones out there that say never date. It, you know, if you listen to Undead, <laughs> Undead Chronic, he's like, no hymen, no diamond. You know, get away from me if you're not. I'm a, I'm, I'm a 50 year old man. That's not gonna happen for me unless I'm, I'm dating somebody way too young <laughs> for myself. But you know, he might be a 28, 28 or 25 year I don't know how old he is, 25, 28 year old guy. And he says, no, I expect him. Okay, well, that's what's nice is it's a big community of just like-minded men that have different paths in life, but we have similarities that we kind of all agree on. That's where so many of these, you know, gurus uh, like Jordan Peterson, or I have a tweet here from Jeremy Boring uh, that, that I'm gonna go through here in a minute. Where, this is where they get it completely wrong is they, they hear one snippet or one creator, or they see a trend on YouTube, or they see, I don't know, Andrew Tate or Pearly things, and they're like, oh, this is the community. No, that's not how any of this works. And just like you might have one religious leader that says one thing and another one that says another, or a politician that says one thing or a politician that says the other. They're all politicians. They're all religious leaders. It doesn't mean their views on the world are the same, because this is a you know, this isn't really a movement. It's kind of just a, it's a philosophy. And, and I think they don't understand that. I'll let him continue on here. Not to cohabit with them, ever. And they're a large movement. Now, how large they are, I don't know, but they're- Growing every day, baby. It's a, and you know, sorry to interrupt, but this is what I think is funny. I always tell people the red pill is not taken orally. It's not taken oral, it's a suppository. It's given up the backside when you least expected it. It doesn't have any slippery goo on it. It goes in dry, it goes in hard, and you are forced to take it. So more people are joining the club every day. I bet Stephen, depending on how bad Stephen Crowder's uh, you know, divorce is, I bet he went straight from, you know, you should be married, you're not a man, until all the way straight to welcome to the club, my brother. Right up the tailpipe is how he got that one. They're large enough, and they have what I would regard as an undue influence over relatively bitter and resentful young men who haven't had great success in the dating market and who are looking for a rationale to write off all women because they've, they're so hurt by their continual rejection. Now, he does have a point here. There are men's content creators, um, and I, I guess you'd call it red pill. I, I'm, I'm starting to get away from that term because it's been, it's been taken over by a bunch of weirdos. Um, but yes, there are some content creators that say avoid all women at all cost. Like you almost need a body camera on you 24 seven anytime you interact with a woman. When you go to a checkout line, find a male cashier. Like I am not that dude, okay? I had a female doctor 
She was from India. She was like 60 years old and she was on point. She was a very good doctor. I had no problems going to see her. It wasn't my first choice, but hey, after I talked to her a little bit, she knew her medicine. She wasn't some crazy wackadoo, you know, feminist doctor that's 28 and has blue hair. There's a difference between those two women doctors. There's a difference between, you know, the woman that want all the sixes and all the sevens on TikTok and, you know, maybe a small town gal that you meet uh, down the way that maybe was married for a few years and, and, and had a kid and he ended up, I don't know, serving in the military and ending or uh, turned out to be truly harmful and she got a divorce, whatever, whatever. Each individual, and this is something I, I try to express to guys, maybe I'm not always clear about it. Each individual person, each individual situation, each individual circumstance needs to be evaluated. We don't just throw everybody in all pools. We don't say all white people are this, all black people are this, all women are this, all men are that. that you don't do that. But he's kind of ascribing that that's how we think, that we're like, oh, avoid women and, and don't date them and they're horrible and that's not how any of this works. One content creator can be completely different from another content creator that might both say that they're going their own way or that they're a red pill or whatever like that. And that is not good for those young men. And so the reason that I disparaged the men going their own way was because I had seen the pernicious effect, these are often older guys, the pernicious effect of their uh, world-weary philosophy on young men. Now, these guys think that they're just warning them, and they are warning them, but they're not just warning them. Now, the reason I re regret... Again, I think that's untrue. I've never, ever... Now, maybe you guys can, can call me out on this and correct me. I've, now, I've said don't get married. I have said that plenty of times, don't get married. But, but other than that, I've never told that I can think of men what to do. You know, I've had guys email me and they say, hey man, I'm married um, and, a, and a good marriage and I got a good one and I'm really happy and we have a great family, but I love your content. And I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Hey, glad you, you found yourself a good one and, and I hope it stays that way for you and, and, and good on you. I've had other guys say, oh man, I got divorced, but I decided to stay in town and struggle a little bit just so I can be close to my kids. You know, I, I don't say to that person, wow, you were stupid for getting married and I can't. No, 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 no. That's not how any of this works. What, what it is, is it's kind of a advice. Yes, it is advice, but it shouldn't be instruction unless the instruction is if you're lonely and you're sad and you're struggling and you don't feel like anybody likes you, here, hit the gym, get your diet in, uh, straightened away, get your learn how to talk to people. I've done plenty of videos on this, on, on eating right, exercising, learn how to talk to people, learn how to talk to strangers, be comfortable talking to strangers before you even think about asking out a girl. Be comfortable with talking to other guys and making a group of friends of guys before you even ask out a, a, a girl. Because those are the baby steps that grow you into a person that's comfortable with asking a woman out or going on dates. But you can then say, hey, you know what, man, I'm aware of these red flags. She's on her phone texting friends all night while I'm on a date with her. Next. Uh, all she did is talk about her boyfriend. Next. Uh, she jokes around about all these dudes she slept with her. She has a bunch of guy friends. Next. Those aren't rules. That is advice. And I, I'll agree with him in one thing, that if, if there is a content creator out there telling you, men, here's what you need to do, that's probably not the best advice. Now, but I say that, and then I'm like, here's what you need to do to be able to talk to women. Hit the gym, eat. But those are positive things, right? Eating, working out, uh, getting comfortable talking to other people. Don't worry about buying a fancy car or having a, you know expensive outfit because you're trying to show that you have money. I'll say that because, well, I don't think that's the right way to really find somebody. If, if a woman's into you, she'll be into you for you. She will accept a coffee date and doesn't require a $200 you know, dinner date, things like that. So I do think there are some guys that maybe, maybe poison it a little bit and make things bad. But for the most, I think in general, if you listen to the men's content creators, number one, we're trying to entertain. This is, this is kind of dry stuff, especially if you've doing it, been doing it for years, talking about the same crap. You're trying to find new stories and new things to make our message interesting, which is why I branch off into the news sometimes. 
It doesn't get nearly as many views as the silly, crazy stories that I do, but I'm always trying to find something. Hey, let's just have a conversation. Here's something cool to talk about. Here's some news you need to know. So yeah, the guys like the crazy stuff. But the whole point is, it's, it's just a philosophy. It's not a law. It's not a rule set. It's not live this way or you're going to be happy or unhappy or whatever. So I think that's what Jordan get and, and a lot of conservatives and a lot of people that see the movement really get wrong. Calling them pathetic weasels is because they also have a point. I do believe that the court systems are staggeringly anti-male, absurdly, horribly anti-male. And I've seen my own clients some of them who are really, really decent, hardworking, family-oriented people demolished by the court systems. And, and so the men going their own way have a point. Um, and so I'm sorry that I called them pathetic weasels, but I, but I outlined my reasons. And so, yes, I do regret that. I have to and, and I won't keep going on on this. You guys can get, kind of get the idea. So I, I think what happens is that if you live in a bubble and you, cause I was in that bubble at one point in time, you know, growing up as a young man, my father told, because when I asked my father about marriage and dating and, and relationships, I said, you and mom, you know, I've got friends that their parents are divorced. How, how have you and mom uh, done so well? Like you never argue, you never really fight about things. And, and that when they do, it's a little tiff about something silly, and then they laugh afterwards and hug, and it's over. I mean, I'd like, as, as, as 1950s wholesome TV parents were, that was my parents. My, my mother didn't curse. My, and I'll, I'll tell you, I know I'm going down rabbit holes here, but I find this an interesting topic here, you know, because the dynamics between people are so different today than they used to be. And I'll tell you a funny story. And, and this is, I call it the steak or the, uh, the liver story. When I was a kid, I don't like liver. I just find it I had dry. My mom tried to do the best she could with onions and mushrooms and gravies and stuff. I just don't like liver. I never have as, as a meal. And my father loved liver. And so about once every two or three weeks, and at the time, I think I was 14 or 15 living at home. Once every two or three weeks, my mother would cook liver. And I asked her, I said, why do we have to eat liver like once or twice a month? I don't like liver. Lynn doesn't like liver. You don't even like liver. Why do you keep cooking liver? And she said, because your father likes it. He works very hard all day. He supports this family. And, you know, he deserves to be treated well. He deserves something he likes. And so I cook it for him and we eat it out of respect for your father. So we're sitting at dinner table. I think that night eating this damn liver. And I asked dad, hey dad, why do you like liver so much? And he said, well, honestly, it's not really my favorite. He said, but you know something? Your, your mother likes it. She's the one cooking dinner. We need to, if she wants to cook liver dinner because she's in the mood for liver, then we're gonna have liver dinner. And, and we're not gonna, you know, we're just gonna, we enjoy it. She's a good cook. And, and my mom looked up at him and said, what do you mean I like liver? I don't like liver. I cook it because you like liver. And my dad said, well, I don't particularly like liver. I, I eat it because I thought you liked it and you're the one cooking it. That day, and we all had a laugh. We finished our dinner and that was the last liver dinner my mother ever cooked. But what's, what is the point that I'm making? The point that I'm making is that there can be great relationships when, when I grew up as a young man, that's what I wanted out of a marriage. I wanted a marriage where I respected my wife and she respected me. And we worked through the hard moments and we worked through the struggles. And if, if we got something wrong, it wasn't a fight or an argument. So we just laugh our way out of it. Hey, no big. What does that take? It takes communication. It takes dedication. It takes love. It takes effort. How many, how many people are putting that into relationships today? I think a lot of men start off like that, wanting that and putting their energy into that. And then after it all falls apart time after time or, or they've been run through the ringer, they say, I, I'm never gonna get what I want out of a relationship. So why am I gonna bother? Why am I gonna you know, risk everything for nothing? So let me, let me just finish it with this. I think I think young men start out like, like that. And then as they grow older, they're either hardened by the 
crazy, ridiculous standards of women. They're hardened by being hurt or cheated on or run through the ringer. They're hardened by, they're hardened in a fire. And when they come out, they're, they're sharp, they're ready to go, they know what's going on. And they say, you know something, at the un- other end of all this sacrifice that I make, what is the prize? The prize isn't worth it. The prize is not that good. You know, the, the, the statistics and everything's against me. And people like Jeremy Boring, I'm going to read his, his uh, text here. Jeremy Boring don't understand that. Now, now, Jeremy may have a great wife and he has a great family and he's quite religious, I believe. Same thing with Matt Walsh, same thing with Ben Shapiro. These are men that are in very tight-knit communities that are very religious. And even if things don't work out so well, they're going to hang in there and they're going to stay married. And maybe they did get to pick really good women. But Stephen Crowder thought the same thing. And, you know, he's religious. His wife's religious. Stephen Crowder thought the same thing. And just a couple of years after having his children, he had some health uh, scares. Uh, he had some issues with his heart. So he had struggles with that. And I don't even know. Maybe he's a horrible person. Maybe he's a great person. Either way, the marriage fell apart. And he was the same. One of the, one of the guys that said, oh, well, you're not a man until you have a family and it all changes. And, well... It didn't turn out for him. Will it turn out for these guys? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But they never seem to pause and look at things from our side of things. And then they're like, oh, uh, you're attacking marriage and marriages aren't happening anymore and, and population and it's men's fault. Okay, dude. Okay. Anyway, he says, uh, this red pill attack on marriage is evil. Divorce is also evil. No fault divorce is particularly evil. That one I definitely agree with. Divorce when children are in the picture is one of the most evil acts a person can engage in. Okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, he's right. And he he does mention this down below. 80% of women initiate it. That's not the man's fault, is it? You know, if you you do look at several cases where the woman walks off, there's a lot of guys that are like, this isn't what I wanted. It kind of came out of the blue. It wasn't... You know, I, I don't think I did anything. She never communicated that I was falling or failing or anything. It just, boom. Well, then inherently he's saying it's the women that are at fault, which he does mention. All of these acts of evil are common because evil is common. We are all given to it from time to time, but that does not change what they are. The fact women initiate 80% of divorce is evidence that some manifestations of evil are more common in women something society and frustratingly Christian society has been trying to obscure since we turned over all of our moral authority to women in the 20th century. I agree with that. Making women the moral authority and the uh, arbiters of truth today was a big, big mistake because now the truth of the world is based on feelings and emotions instead of logic and reason. And that is one of the Big, big problems while why we, why the world collectively is in the problems that we're in today. Because if you look at societies where, where women kind of keep to the back burner, and, and not to say that they're less, I just mean that they're not in the forefront of politics and media and, you know, sharing their opinions online and going crazy with all this stuff. You look at a country more like Russia or Poland, because those two countries are still you know, pretty, pretty male driven. Uh, you look, you look at the Middle East as a perfect example. They don't have any of this craziness going on. They don't have the, you know, men are women, women are men and all these arguments. And why? Because the men are in charge and the, the, the men lay the smack down in some cases, quite literally. But when you look at the ones that are just bowing to the whims of what women want and emotion and everything else, we get to where we are in the world today. Why has all of a sudden everything gone crazy in the last 10 or 20 years? Because women are taking over most of the institutional power. They're taking over advertising at agencies. They're taking over media. They're the, they're the ones writing most of the articles. They're the ones pushing the direction of the country on Twitter and, and TikTok. So, yeah, it, it definitely is their fault. Uh, It's also evidence of deep societal sickness, one that creates enormous incentives for women to divorce and virtually, though not absolutely, none for men. Again, I agree. 
Lots of uh, incentive for women to divorce and virtually none for men. The red pill... The red-pilled rightly observe much of this sickness. They even rightly diagnose much of it. But then they turn on the institution itself, an institution fundamental to human flourishing, male flourishing, the flourishing of children, and the flourish of society. An institution that is, when rightly ordered, the great metaphor for our relationship with Christ. But let me ask you this. He says in his own words, an institution that is when rightly ordered, it is not rightly ordered. I've done this in videos. You guys have probably seen them. There are attorneys that get funding from the government, the fe- here in the United States, the federal government for women that have had harm done to them. These attorneys have been, uh, as a matter of fact, Project Veritas, although I don't know if it was Project Veritas. It might have been um, OMG, which is the uh, media group. Oh, what's his name there? Um, uh, O'Keefe, O'Keefe Media Group, where James O'Keefe, who used to do Project Veritas, um, he, he caught attorneys on video saying like, oh, yeah, if you can say this and you can, you know, you can finagle the courts and men don't have any say. Well, the institution is not properly built. So, do you, and, and I'll read my response to this here in a second, but you don't, you don't participate in something when it's not rightly ordered, it is broken, and it's ver- broken very badly against men. I mean, Jordan Peterson said this, and this was six years ago. What has changed in the last six years, or the last decade, or two decades, or th- uh, like since Reagan put in no-fault divorce in California back in the 80s? What has improved for men in marriage? Nothing. The only difference is today, willing or uh, women are more willing and likely to file because they see it's cash and prizes on the way out the back door. He says, marriages make men men. Marriage saves men and is a picture of the salvation of men. We should fight to make marriage marriage. We must defend men's rights in marriage, but we must not abandon marriage. Now, let me, let me say this. I will agree with part of this. I will agree that we should defend men's right in marriage. I think we should fight to make marriage, marriage, like make it really meaningful again, where people can't just bail because they found, uh, uh, women can't just bail and file because they found a hotter dude at the gym. Or or same thing with men, where men can't just bail. But see, men just can't bail because they get hit, usually financially, losing custody of the Men actually have skin in the game. Women have zero skin in the game. So if that's the case, why, why should men sign on? This is what I have a problem with. Marriage makes men men. Marriage saves men and is a picture of the salvation of men. Let me ask you something. A young man at the age of 15 or 16 that lied on his draft papers here in the United States so he could go defend this country against the, the powers that be, the axis of evil <laughs> uh, overseas. I'd say that that 16-year-old man, boy, is more of a man because he went and fought and risked everything he had to protect a country he loved and maybe a family he loved or other people he loved or whatever. That 16-year-old that said he was 18 so he could go do that, that's a man. How many married men today that are, you know, stay-at-home dads while mom makes all the money and they're, yes, dear, okay, honey, whatever you want. Do you want me to make you mimosa? These, these ultra-feminist men, how many that are, that are married, how many of them are really men? I'd say quite, because that 16-year-old probably kicked the crap out of that 35-year-old, you know, stay-at-home dad. That 16-year-old was probably a tough SOB. I'd say that that makes someone a man. What about a guy that, that has a good group of friends that, that donates time to the community, that works maybe for Habitat for Humanity, or he's a farmer and he, he, he plants a little extra crop to donate to the, the local shelters. Is he a man? I'd say the fact that he's giving to his community and going out of his way to, to do something as a whole that better society, I'd say he's a man. Is he more of a man than a dude that got married, that four dudes married one woman? And, and they're all, I don't know, cucks or whatever else, and, and they, all, they all have to guess whose baby it is. That's not a man, but they're married. See, he has a picture of what marriage is in his mind that is different than many other people's visions of what marriage is in their minds, and that's the problem. The problem with 
a lot of conservative men and a lot of men that are kind of old school like this. My father would have been kind of not understanding. I, when I was younger, wouldn't have been understanding, but I'm understanding now. The problem is they don't understand how the world actually works. I think that's why a lot of times conservatives lose the culture because they're stuck in their dogma and whether right or wrong, that mean they morally might be right, but you have to, you have to look at the room and say, how can I incorporate these lost boys, these lost men, the men that have been hurt? How do we incorporate them to where we say, we understand you, we get you, there's plenty of people here that'll support you. No, instead he says, you're not married, that's what makes a man a man. Oh, you're, you're bitter and whatever and blah, blah. Oh, well, you know, you're, you're a weasel. This is why conservatives don't understand. And, and I, they just don't get it. Uh, they say right here, but we must not abandon marriage. It's already been aman- abandoned, my brother. To abandon marriage is to abandon the f- fight beneath the fight, the fight on which all other fights are premised. Anti-marriage is anti-life. You cannot be conservative and anti-marriage. So uh, even though I might say, and this is the problem right here, this is a statement, this is a judgment. You cannot be conservative and anti-marriage. So even though a lot of, I'm actually kind of a liberal mind, like traditional liberal minded man, but many of the things I believe are conservative. I do believe second amendment. I do believe first amendment. Now you might not, well, that's not conservative. It is now. I believe men are born men and will be men until the day they die. That's a pretty conservative statement now. But according to him, I'm not welcome in his club in any way, shape, or form because I'm anti-marriage. This is why the, 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 the right and conservatives lose the culture war. Because they're like, if you're not up to our standards, you're out. Well, what does the left do? The left says, if you don't bow down to what we deem is culture and acceptable, you're out. And what does that mean? It means men like myself, and probably a lot of you are like, I I don't belong to a political party. I don't belong to a society. I don't belong to anywhere. I don't, I don't belong, (laughs) you know? And it doesn't mean that we're in, well, in some ways it means we're ostracized, but in many ways, it also means we, we're going to find a group of like-minded men, like-minded individuals, and we're going to have each other's backs. And people will say, well, you're not on the right. You're, You're correct. You're not on the left. Correct. You don't belong. What do you belong to? Nothing. And that's the point. I am a free minded, intellectual, um, rational male. And I, I don't belong to anything. I don't, I don't fit in a group. I don't, that's why I'm single. That's why I'm living alone. That's why I'm doing my thing. And he assumes that, that men that are alone or men that choose to be alone are sad. We've lost. We're lonely. Granted, there's a lot of them that are that way. And hopefully channels like mine go, hey, dude, there's a lot of us in the same boat. Here's how you can get some friends. Here's how you can save your money and and maybe one day be a little bit more independent. Here's why you don't need to marry women. Here's why you can go buy a couple of ladies of the night a year to get your freak on and still, you know, still be able to sleep at night. This is the problem with conservatives. My my reply was, should a man sign a contract that women break 80% of the time that often leads to financial ruin and loss, uh, losing custody of their children in court. Women are often goaded into lying men are uh, harmful to guarantee their win in court. Until the laws are fixed, marriage is a hard no. Um, Richard Cooper says, so blah, 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 shame on you men. Uh, bet, be a better beta and wife up. Got it. Now, I, I, don't, I don't know if that's really so much what he was sha- saying, but I get Richard's point. He says, manning up and leading a family against the odds and the, uh, and the tough and unfair circumstances created by a feminized society that hates men and male leadership does not make you a beta. In fact, it's the core obligation of a man to do so. So men, you know what makes you an alpha strong male? Risk your financial freedom, risk your child custody, risk everything you have to go against the odds. And fight back against a feminized society. No, 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 man. Feminized society tells women women can do whatever they want. They really say it, it's, it, it fights back against a feminized society that hates men. Well, do you, do you think, I mean, something like 60% of women say that they're 
mostly feminist. Here in the United States, up like 65 or 70% of women vote hard left. Do you think that they're not on, on board with just tossing men under the bus? He's out of touch. Well, me and my family and my friends and all of us, you just pick bad women. <laughs> okay, dude. Okay, dude. Uh, here's Zuby. I like Zuby, by the way. Great musician. He, uh, he's, he's, he's a rapper. Uh, he says, yes, however, very few conservatives speak honestly about the obvious risks, let alone push to change some of the unfair and punitive laws. So the red pill mentality will continue to gain ground because it's rational, even if the prescriptions and conclusions can be wrong. And, and Jeremy says, agreed. All right. He said, that's why I expressly acknowledge that the red pill movement rightly identifies and diagnoses many of these issues, but their prescriptions are vile. There's nothing noble about living for yourself alone. Do I live for myself or do you not know anything about me, Jeremy? I, uh, now I haven't done this recently, but it, it's been a few years because I've been ramming all over the roads and doing things. When I was living in North Carolina, I regularly went to Habitat for Humanity and helped build shelters. I regularly went to some of the food donation places. I didn't have any food to donate, so what did I do? I would wait in the back for them to dump off a load of potatoes, tomatoes, onions, whatever excess the farmers had that were deemed not worthy for grocery stores because maybe they had a slightly off shape or, or uh, maybe weren't, didn't have the greatest of color or whatever, apples, all of that stuff. And you pick through these bins and anything that has been smashed is, is slightly um, damaged, rotted, you know, can't really be sold or used. You throw out and you're sitting there picking through food that's gross and slimy. And, and then the stuff that's good, you take that over and you wash it all off and you clean it up and you get it ready to package uh, to go get sent off to either homeless shelters or places that can use it to cook for it. I don't know about you, but that sounds pretty noble. I did that when I was alone. I started this channel to spread a message to maybe help other men realize they're not out there and they're not crazy for wanting to be alone. I think, I don't know if I'd call that noble, but it's at least putting an effort trying to better society in some way. You know, this is the problem. Again, the, the, they just, they don't look outside their own bubbles any more than the left looks outside of theirs. Uh, here's Undead Chronic, as a matter of fact. It's not... Uh, men's job to save women. Men refuse to be responsible over wild animals that can destroy them at any time. I agree. Um, here's a guy who says, after filing for a divorce after 23 harmful years, I got a lot of weird reactions from Christian friends. Some were surprised, some were supportive, some cried with me, and some were terribly judgmental. Not knowing what I went, uh, not knowing what went on in my home, they thought I should be able to just take it and get it all under control, all by myself, as if there weren't two people in the marriage. This is from a guy named Mr. Uh, Encouragement. He says, and as I looked at the spectrum of responses, I noticed that the ones that were the most judgmental of me, or the, the ones that were most judgmental, were the people who seemed to laugh the least, the people whose marriages I would like, I would least like to emulate, the people who had the worst problems forever, forever, for whatever it's worth. You know, I'll leave it at this because, you know, I'm going on a little longer here, but I'll leave it at this. The problem with, I think, a lot of men, the problem that a lot of men are facing, young men, old men, all men, well, not all men, but a lot of us, what we see is that we increasingly find ourselves in a world that doesn't belong. In the 80s and 90s, I didn't like the push against, you know, they used, to, they used to go after Dungeons and Dragons, the board game, and a lot of the music I listened to because they called it satanic. It was evil. If you play Ozzy Osbourne's Bark at the Moon backwards, you'll hear him calling prayers to the devil. That was real. And it was, and, and it was both the left and the right kind of pushing against it back then, but it was definitely the religious moms, you know, the religious right. And I said, well, I don't, I don't want to belong to a group that is authoritarian and tells me what I can and can't do. Fast forward to today, and it's now the other side telling me what I can and can't do. Very quickly, a lot of us realize, you know something? Everything seems to be very tribal in the world. 
I have some nuanced thoughts about what's going on in the conflict overseas between this country and this country. I think this, and people will say, oh, you're a, an apologist. Oh, you're, oh, how dare you not support the regime? No, I, I, didn't, I didn't say that. I said I have varying thoughts on both sides. I read my comments. Many of you guys take very hard sides on things. I, hey, that's fine. You do you. But the harder the stance you take on anything in this world, the harder, the, I think the more you're going to struggle, the, the less happy you're going to be. I'll change my mind on, on a drop of the hat with the right, you know, with the right evidence, but I don't see any evidence that's telling me I'm wrong in this particular situation. That's the problem is that men today are more men are feeling disenfranchised because we realize we don't belong to anything. No one really sees the world through my eyes except me. So how do I navigate that? My hope is that, you know, channels like mine and others are like it. First, say you're not alone. Second, tell men you're not crazy. And third, do what's right for you. Doesn't, you know, you don't have to be left, right, up, center, brown, black, white, whatever. Just do what's right for you. I mean, you know, as long as it's safe and legal. Well, as long as it's not harming other people. Safe and legal is even questionable. You do what's right for you. Just don't hurt other people. More men are finding they're like that because everything seems to be authoritarian today. The right, the left, the center, the this, the that, the media, the... Just leave us alone. Just let us find our own, our own paths to happiness. And they won't let it happen because everybody seems to be able to want to tell you what you need to do. And if you're not doing this, you're evil. You're vile. <laughs> the right is no different than the left in many ways. Just right now, the left has gone crazy. 40 years ago, it was the right that went crazy. Someday, it might be another direction that goes, everything's crazy. Men just want to be alone, left alone to their own vi to their own devices, or vices, whatever you whatever you want to call it. They're not right. These men are not right any more than than I'm right. No one's right. We're just putting our thoughts out there. But the minute you say, if you're not this, you're this, and if you don't do this, then you're this, and if you're the, you're vile or evil, you've lost me. You, you're going to lose a lot of men today. They just don't keep up with the times. That's all there is to it. Uh, guys, if you like my work, uh, join me over on betterbachelor.locals.com. If you're on uh, YouTube, get over to Rumble. My content automatically syncs up over there like 12 hours after it comes out. You get the same content. I get a lot less money because of advertising over there, I, although I don't make much over here anymore as it is. But just support companies like Rumble that are actually supporting free speech. YouTube canceled Russell. Uh, if you watch my video on brand uh, the other day, they canceled him. Who uh, TikTok did? Uh, who else did? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. Like the only place he's allowed to be anymore is on Twitter because of Elon Musk saying, hey, we're not going to condemn anybody without them going through trials and courts and tribulations and all that stuff. And Rumble, they were like, yeah, you know what? No, we're not doing this. And Locals, Locals is good about that too. We're going to have to pick our battles. But right now, you know, if you're on YouTube, you're, you're still watching the content on the enemy playground. Get over to uh, Rumble or better join me over at Locals. All right, guys, I will leave it there. I'll have something else for you later. And we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.